I thank all those who have made it possible for us to hear from President Zelensky today, whether here in the chamber or by video link. J'invite maintenant le Premier ministre à nous adresser um, la parole. Now ask the Prime Minister Monsieur to take the floor. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Chers parlementaires, amis, Dear parliamentarians, collègues, friends bonjour, and colleagues, good morning and thank you for being here today to welcome a courageous exceptionnel. and exceptional leader. President Zelensky, on behalf of parliamentarians and on behalf of all Canadians, it is an honour to welcome you to our House. Mr. President, Volodymyr, you are a friend. Canadians and Ukrainians are friends, and they have been for a long time. Our people share deep historical ties. In the early 20th century, a massive wave of Ukrainian immigrants came to Canada. Many of them settled in the Canadian prairies. They worked the land. They built churches distinguished by their beautiful spires, and they helped shape Canada in significant ways. Notre pays compte aujourd'hui Today, there are 1.4 million Ukrainian Canadians in our country, making it the second largest Ukrainian diaspora in the world, whether as farmers, producers, scientists, community leaders, athletes or frontline workers, Ukrainian Canadians continue to make a tremendous contribution to our country. But the friendship between Canada and Ukraine is not only based on this shared history, it is also based on our shared values. Volodymyr, in the years I've known you, I've always thought of you as a champion for democracy. And now, democracies around the world are lucky to have you as our champion. Your courage and the courage of your people inspires us all. You're defending the right of Ukrainians to choose their own future. And in doing so, you're defending the values that form the pillars of all free democratic countries. Freedom, human rights, justice, truth, international order. These are the values you're risking your life for as you fight for Ukraine and Ukrainians. Beyond that, you're inspiring democracies and democratic leaders around the world to be more courageous, more united, and to fight harder for what we believe in. You remind us that friends are always stronger together. With allies and partners, we're imposing crippling sanctions to make sure Putin and his enablers in Russia and Belarus are held accountable. Today, in line with our European Union partners, I can announce that we have imposed severe sanctions on 15 new Russian officials, including government and military elites who are complicit in this illegal war. Canada will continue to support Ukraine with military equipment as well as financial and humanitarian assistance. And we will be there to help rebuild once the aggressor is repelled. In Canada, we like to root for the underdog. We believe that when a cause is just and right, it will always prevail, no matter the size of the opponent. This doesn't mean it'll be easy. Ukrainians are already paying incalculable human costs. 
This illegal and unnecessary war is a grave mistake, and Putin must stop it now. Vladimir Putin's blatant disregard for human life is absolutely unacceptable. Canada continues to demand that Russia stop targeting civilians and end this unjustifiable war. Ukrainians are standing up to authoritarianism. And as parliamentarians united in this House today, and all Canadians, we stand with you. As friends, you can count on our unwavering and steadfast support. And now, it is my great privilege to introduce to you all the President of Ukraine, our friend, Volodymyr Zelensky. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Speaker, Prime Minister, dear Justin, members of the government, members of the parliament, all distinguished guests, friends. Before I begin, I would like you to understand my feelings and feelings of all Ukrainians as far as it is possible. Our feelings over the last 20 days, 20 days of a full-scale aggression of Russian Federation after eight years of fighting in Donbass region. Can you only imagine? Imagine that on the on 4 a.m. each of you you start hearing bomb explosions, severe explosions. Justin, can you imagine hearing you, your children, hear all these severe explosions, bombing of airport, bombing of Ottawa airport, tens of other cities of your wonderful country. Can you imagine that? Cruise, cruise missiles are being falling down on your terrain, and your children are asking you what happened, and you are receiving the first news which infrastructure objects have been bombed and destroyed by Russian Federation. And you know how many people already died. Can you only imagine what words, how can you explain to your children that you just uh, full-scale aggression just happened in your country. You know that this is war to annihilate your state, your country. You know that this is the war to subjugate your people. And on second day, you receive uh, notifications that huge cones of military equipment are entering your country, crossing the border. They are entering small cities. They are giving siege this encircling cities. And, and they start to shell civil neighborhoods. They bomb school buildings. They destroyed kindergarten facilities, like in our city, city of Sumy, like in the city of Ohtyrka. Imagine that someone is taking siege, laying siege to Vancouver. Can you just imagine them for a second? And all these people who are left in such city. And this is exactly the situation that our city of Mariupol is suffering right now. And they are left without heat or hydro, or without means of communicating, almost without food, without water, seeking shelter in bomb shelters. Dear Justin, 
Dear, yes, can you imagine that every day you receive memorandums about the number of casualties, including among women and children? You've heard about the bombings. Currently we have 97 children that died during this war. Can you imagine famous CN Tower in Toronto? If, they, if it was hit by Russian bombs. Of course, I don't wish this on anyone, but this is our reality in which we live. We have to contemplate, we have to see where the next bombing will take place. Uh, your church is square, we have a freedom square in the city of of, in the city of Harden, our Babin Yar, the place where uh, uh, victims of Holocaust were buried, and they, they, it has been bombed by the Russians. Imagine that Canadian facilities have been bombed, similarly as our buildings and memorial places are being bombed. A number of families have died. Every night is a horrible night. Russians are shelling from all kinds of artillery, from tanks. They are hitting civilian infrastructure. They are hitting big buildings. Uh, can you imagine that there is a uh, fire starting at a nuclear power plant, and that's exactly what happened in our country. Each city that they are marching through, they are taking down Ukrainian flags. Can you imagine someone taking down your Canadian flags in Montreal and other Canadian cities? I know that you all support Ukraine. We've been friends with you, Justin, but also I would like you to understand and I would like you to feel this, what we feel every day. We want to live and we want to be victorious. We want to prevail for the sake of life. Can you imagine when you, when you call your friends, your friendly nation, and you ask, please close the sky? Close the airspace. Please stop the bombing. How many more cruise missiles have to fall on our cities until you make this happen? And they, in return, they express their deep concerns about the situation. When we talk to with our partners, and they say, "Please hold on, hold on, a little longer." Some, some people are talking about uh, trying to avoid the escalation. And at the same time, in response to our aspiration to become members of NATO, we also do not hear a clear answer. Sometimes we don't see obvious things. It's a, it's a dire straits, but it also allowed us to see who our real friends are over the last 20 days and as well eight previous years. I am sure that you've been able to see clearly what's going on. And I'm addressing all of you. Canada has always been steadfast in their support. It's, you've been a reliable partner to Ukraine and Ukrainians, and I'm sure this will continue. You've offered your help, your assistance at the, our earliest request. You supply us with the military assistance, with humanitarian assistance. You impose severe sanctions, serious sanctions. At the same time, we see that, unfortunately, this does, it did not bring the end to the war. You, you can see that our cities like Kharkiv, Mariupol and many other cities are not protected just like your cities are protected, Edmonton, Vancouver. You can see that Kyiv is being shelled and bombed. Ivano-Frank city, Ivano-Frank 
It used to be we were very peaceful country, peaceful cities, but now they're being constantly bombarded. Bombarded. Basically, what I'm trying to say that we all need to do, you all need to do more to stop Russia, to protect Ukraine, and by doing that, to protect Europe from Russian threat. They're destroying everything: memorial complexes, schools. Uh, hospitals, uh, uh, housing complex. They already killed 97 Ukrainian children. We are not asking for much. We are asking for justice, for real support, which will help us to prevail, to defend, to save life, to save life all of the world. Canada is leading in these efforts. And I'm hoping that other countries will follow the same suit. We are asking for more of your leadership, and please take more, uh, greater part in these efforts. Justin and all of our friends of, our, of Ukraine, all friends of the truth, please understand how important it is for us to close our airspace from Russian missiles and Russian aircrafts. I hope you can understand. I hope you can increase your efforts. You can increase sanctions so they, don't, so they will not have a single dollar to fund their war effort. Commercial entities should not be working in Russia. Probably you know better than many in any other countries that this attack on Ukraine is their attempt to annihilate Ukrainian people, and there is nothing else to it. This is their main objective. It's actually the war against Ukrainian people. And it's an attempt to destroy everything that we as Ukrainians do. It's an attempt to destroy our future, to destroy our nation, our character. You, Canadians, you know very well all this. That's why I'm asking you, please do not stop in your efforts. Please expand your efforts to bring back peace in our peaceful country. I believe, and I know that you can do it. I, we are building, we are part of the anti-war coalition, and jointly I'm sure that we'll achieve results. I would like to also ask our Ukrainian diaspora in Canada. This is a historical moment, and we need your support, your practical support. And we hope that with your practical steps you will show that you are part of the modern Ukrainian history. Please remember, this is a practical modern day history of Ukraine. We want to live, we want to have peace. I am grateful to everyone of you in the Parliament of Canada who is present there, to every Canadian citizen. I am very grateful to you, Justin. I am grateful to Canadian people. And I am confident that together we will overcome and we will be victorious. Glory to Ukraine. Thank you to Canada.
Thank you, Mr. President. I now invite the Honourable George Fury, Speaker of the Senate, to say a few words. President Zelensky, Prime Minister Trudeau, Chief Justice Wagner, Speaker Rona, fellow parliamentarians, distinguished guests, mesdames et messieurs. Monsieur le Président, Mr. President, it is a great honor and privilege for me to thank you for your very powerful and inspiring words. On behalf of all senators, members of the House of Commons, and indeed, on behalf of all Canadians, it is my honor and privilege to thank you for your very powerful and inspiring words today. Please know, Mr. President, that Canadians stand with you. We know what is at stake. You are battling for your people, for your country, and for all of us who believe in peace and democracy, in truth and justice. For all of us who stand against tyranny, lies, and the horrific war crimes that have been committed against the Ukrainian people. There is a word in the Bible, one word, that expresses so much of the courage that you, Mr. President, and your fellow Ukrainians are showing the world. In the original Hebrew, the word is hineni. Literally, it means, here I stand. It, it was said by the great Old Testament leaders when called upon to lead their people. It is a statement of stepping up to leadership in the face of overwhelming odds. It is clearly what you are saying, Mr. President, by your actions, and what all Ukrainians are saying in this terrible time of crisis. The world is witnessing a Ukraine united more than ever in common cause to secure its place among the family of nations. As Prime Minister Trudeau has made clear by his words and actions, Canada stands with you. I know I speak on behalf of all Canadians when I express our admiration for the leadership and courage you have demonstrated as the Ukrainian people struggle to repel a brutal and illegal invasion. You have shown the world that Ukraine will not cower, will not falter, and will not be defeated. The heart and soul of Ukraine are strong. Canada recognizes your fortitude, your resilience, and your strength of purpose. Canada stands with Ukraine and her many allies in the pursuit of a swift and peaceful resolution to this conflict. This resolve rests upon our shared commitment to democracy, to human rights, and to the sovereign equality of all nations. For Canadians, Ukraine is permanently woven into the fabric of our culture. Ukraine, simply put, is family. Mr. President, to you and the people of Ukraine, please be assured of our solidarity in the days and weeks ahead. Thank you, Mr. President, for your great strength and your great courage. We thank you once again for your courage and determination in the face of this horrific onslaught and for your inspiring words to Canada and indeed to the world today. Slava Ukraini. Thank you, Speaker Fury. Monsieur le Président, Mr. President, most of all, most of us rather, can only imagine the hardship, the sorrow and the fear that the people of Ukraine are enduring as their nation is attacked and their very existence is threatened. The extraordinary courage and defiance that Ukrainians are demonstrating in defending their country and their way of life is an example 
to all freedom-loving people. And it is clear that many, our, that many of our fellow citizens are drawing strength from your own determination to repel the invaders and protect your homeland. You are not just the president anymore. You have proven to be a great leader of your nation. As Ukraine continues to fight for its freedom, please know that you are not alone and that you will not be left behind. We will be there with you. We may be distant cousins in terms of geography, but Ukraine is woven into the very fabric of Canadian society thanks to, to more than a million Canadians of Ukrainian descent. In an interview you gave two years ago, you said, and I quote, we must remember the heroes of today, heroes of the arts, heroes of literature, simply heroes of Ukraine. Why don't we use their names, the names of the heroes that today unite Ukraine? To the people of Ukraine, to your friends in Canada and around the world, you, Vladimir Zelensky, are one of those heroes. Heroyam Slava. On behalf Merci. of all parliamentarians, thank you for having Canadien addressed the people of Canada and for showing us the true meaning of courage, de la liberté, freedom et du and patriotism. May we prove worthy of the friendship between peuple, our people and our countries. Slava Ukraini. Merci. Merci. Thank you. Jakuyu. I now invite the Honourable Candice Bergen, Interim Leader of the Official Opposition, to address us. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I would like to begin by first and foremost stating on behalf of my Conservative Caucus our complete admiration and respect for the people and the nation of Ukraine. And to President Zelensky, let me express to you how much I admire your courage and your sacrificial leadership at this critical time in Ukraine's history. The kind of leadership that you are showing, sir, is very rare and it serves as an inspiration to all of us who are elected. You are the leader of Ukraine for such a time as this, and we remain indebted to you. Monsieur le Président Zelensky, merci pour votre leadership President dans cette Zelensky, thank you for your leadership in this war against your country and your defense of democracy. The official opposition stands with Ukraine. It is our duty. We will also be there after this conflict in order to help you rebuild Ukraine. Your courage inspires us. The images that we are seeing from Ukraine, as you described them, President, are heartbreaking and painful. Families huddled in bomb shelters, the ruins of a children's hospital and a maternity ward, the elderly, elderly who are trying to find their way to safety. But there is also inspiration as we watch ordinary people, men and women of all ages, defending their homeland. We are witnesses to the strength and the defiance of Ukrainians standing up for their freedom, their independence and their sovereignty. Ukrainians aren't just fighting to defend themselves. Let's be very clear. They are defending all of Europe because Putin's brutal attack on Ukraine is an attack on all of us. That's the lesson history has taught us and one we cannot ignore. And, and it is why we must help the people of Ukraine in every way possible. Canada has the largest number of people of Ukraine descent outside of Ukraine and Russia. For a century, they have enriched our communities and our culture, our, our culture, especially in the Canadian prairies, which is where I am from. Canada, and Manitoba in particular, share ties with Ukraine that cannot be broken. And now, almost 1.4 million Ukrainian Canadians are watching what is happening. Their hearts and their souls are reaching out, 
hoping, praying for the nation and the people of their forebears. This war of naked aggression has revealed Vladimir Putin for what he really is, a warmonger and a violent predator with no regard for human life and suffering. He has crossed lines that after two world wars we thought would never be crossed, and he's shaken the rule-based order that has kept millions safe since 1945. Every day he tells the world lies, and then he proceeds to kill innocent and vulnerable Ukrainians, including women and children. And while on his rampage, he continues to threaten the world, saying if he doesn't get his way, he will use the worst extremes possible. It's sickening to watch. Putin must be brought to justice. He must be held to account for his crimes against humanity at the International Criminal Court at The Hague. just a war against Ukraine, it is a war against the free democratic world. We must stand with Ukraine. It is not a choice, it is a moral duty. Canada was the first country to recognize Ukraine's independence from the Soviet Union. Now it's time to honour that legacy. We must do more together with our allies to secure Ukraine's airspace. We need to protect protect at a minimum the airspace over the humanitarian corridors so that Ukrainians can seek safe passage away from the war zones and to allow humanitarian relief to reach those areas under siege. Canada must do whatever it can to cut through any red tape and welcome Ukrainians who are fleeing, although we all know that what Ukrainians want most is to be able to live in their home nation free, sovereign and peaceful. President Zelensky. assure you that Canada will be a safe haven for Ukraine citizens who choose to come here until the battle is over. While they are in Canada, we will cherish them, care for them, provide for them purpose and hope, and when it is time, they will return to their beloved Ukraine and their families. This is our pledge to you. Let me conclude by saying simply, Canadians support you today as you face Putin and his reckless empire building. Conservatives stand shoulder to shoulder with Ukraine and we will continue to support you when this terrible conflict finally ends and you rebuild your homes and communities. Your courage and faith and your fortitude in the face of adversity are an inspiration to all of us. Slava Ukraini, glory to Ukraine, glory to the heroes. Keep fighting, keep believing, keep hoping. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Bergen. I will ask the leader of the Bloc Québécois, Mr. Yves-François Blanchet, to take the floor. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Esteemed colleagues, esteemed colleagues et surtout, Mr. Speaker, and Monsieur especially Mr. President, Il est de it is difficult for me today to express myself in simple words that cannot carry or express all the sadness, all the indignation, all the anger roused by the dirty war inflicted on your great nation, on your great people. It is difficult for me to admit to a certain powerlessness as well, a powerlessness to do much more than express our compassion. Our desire, which is only a shadow of yours, to wake us all up from this nightmare that inhabits our screens on a daily basis. Of course, the Quebec nation, it is safe to say, I believe, is massively behind you, massively behind your people. 
Of course, we have asked and support the will that Canada act in the only valid way in concert with the free countries of this world and with major international organizations, whether economic, military or humanitarian. Of course, we also call for ever more severe economic sanctions. This, so that it is from within Russia itself, through balanced negotiations, that the senseless aggression will come to an end. We strongly urge the Canadian government to ease the obstacles to welcoming refugees from Ukraine. In Quebec and in Canada, il y a des gens, il y a des familles, there are people, there are families, there are the diaspora that wishes to welcome these refugees. We also need a humanitarian bridge between your territory and ours. It is with this May that we have also heard your call for more weapons. You are entitled to them. You need them. The Quebec nation is peaceful. The Ukrainian nation is peaceful. I am convinced that it is with reluctance that you have asked for these weapons. Your people have the right to defend those they love. They have the right to defend this land that is theirs. So yes, Mr. President, let's arm the Ukrainians rapidly and more significantly. Mr. President, all this is still too little. Too little every time a man, a woman or a child dies, every time a hospital, a daycare center, a school, a park or even a single flower is destroyed. Every time, Mr. President, every time we are told that we have done too little, and in a way, we've done it too late. I would like to believe, Mr. President, that we must distinguish between the people and those who lead them. I would like to believe that the Russian people are the first victims of the Kremlin's dictator. But there are leaders of various kinds who do speak for their people, and there is no doubt that you are one. You have turned one of the enemy's worst weapons against itself, the powerful, the vicious, the petty machine of deception and disinformation of the Kremlin, wanted to impose the false narrative of a history rewritten by the dictator for his own benefit and for his own personal glory. On the contrary, through simplicity, through frankness, through courage, you have touched the whole world. You kept the eyes of the world upon your people. And in doing so, you were able to, and you still have to insist upon, obtaining help that perhaps would have otherwise escaped you. You see, Mr. President, what we cannot do what we cannot do is the cruelest thing of all. Live through this despicable war in dark basements, shaken by the tremors of bombs dropped on your towns and on your villages. Fear for those you love. Doubt in the future. Dread regarding a reconstruction that will last at least a generation. Fear itself. Against the fear in the hearts of Ukraine's children, we can only do too little. I apologize for that. Your enemy, Mr. President, has neither the heart, nor the strength, nor the courage, nor the dignity to overcome the bravery of the Ukrainian people. Mr. President Zelensky, you will win. Freedom will be restored to you. And in its modest way, Quebec will celebrate with Ukraine. Merci.
Merci, Monsieur Blanchet. Thank you, Mr. I Blanchet. I now invite the leader of the New Democratic Party, Mr. Jagmeet Singh, to speak to us. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I want to thank President Zelensky. We heard his words today. We want to thank him for his courage, his inspiration, his resilience. We want to thank the people of Ukraine for their courage and their resilience. He asked us to imagine what it's like to wake up four in the morning to bombing. He asked us to imagine what it's like to explain to his to children. What does it mean? What is going on? Why are we being bombed? Why are we being attacked? He asked us to imagine what it would be like to lose 97 children to a war. He asked us to imagine if major cities in our country, major cities and major places that we think about, think about Montreal and Ottawa, our capital city, Toronto, Vancouver. He asked us to imagine what it would be like if tanks rolled into these cities. What would it be like to see bombs fall on our homes and our cities and our communities, on schools, on hospitals? He asked us to imagine that, and frankly, we can't imagine that. Sitting in Canada, it is unimaginable. But we've seen the horrors unfolding in Ukraine. We've heard the words of President Zelensky. We've spoken with Ukrainian Canadians who share with us the pain that they're experiencing right now, not knowing if their loved ones are gonna survive the night. We've heard from families that call constantly asking, are you okay? Are you still alive? It is unimaginable for us. And he asked us, imagine what it's like and please help. He asked for more help. He acknowledged that so far Canada has been a strong ally, but he asked for more help. And we must answer that call. Canadians stand with Ukraine and will answer that call to provide as much help as possible in this time. Canadians want to do more. And we heard from President Zelensky that sanctions are important and we want to increase that. We know that one of the most important things we can do, we know that Putin does not care. President Putin does not care about the people. He does not care about his country, but he does care about his wealth. And we know the way to attack Putin, the way to make sure that he feels the pressure of the sanctions is to target him where it, co where it counts, and that is to target the wealth that is held by his allies and oligarchs. And so we are on that path, and we need to continue to apply the most severe of sanctions possible to target specifically President Putin and his wealth. And we know that we can provide humanitarian help. Canada has done its part and needs to continue to do that. We need to welcome Ukrainians that are fleeing this crisis, that are seeking refuge. We need to provide humanitarian help on the ground. We need to continue to provide that support. President Zelensky, President Zelensky has asked us if we can imagine the horrors of this war, of this war rather. He's asked us if we can imagine if the same war were to happen here in Canada. And this is something that is unfathomable to us. He asked that we increase assistance and we must do so to Ukraine. We must increase sanctions and we must meet the needs of the Ukrainians and we will do so. I think about the words that we've heard from President Zelensky, the speeches that he's given, and I think about the moments of courage that we've seen reported from everyday Ukrainians standing up to this violence, standing up to this flagrant aggression of, of President Putin, something that we clearly and firmly denounce. When we see in those moments, we see incredible courage. I, I struggle to find <coughs> the words to describe it. I think about something my mom always taught me, this phrase in Punjabi, it's chardikala. And I always misunderstood what it meant. She says it means rising spirits. And she always said it's rising spirits in the face of difficult odds. And I can't think a moment to describe the courage of Ukrainians, the courage of President Zelensky. I can't think of a, 
a more fitting moment to describe that as Tartikala, as rising spirits, as a defiant optimism. In the face of one of the largest armies in the world, Ukrainians are saying, we will not back down, we will not give up, and we are so incredibly inspired by them for their fight for democracy, for their fight for freedom, and we stand in full solidarity. We wish their Tartikala, their rising spirits, their defiant optimism to continue, and we will be with you every step of the way. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Singh. I now invite the House Leader of the Green Party, Ms. Elizabeth May, to say a few words. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Mr. Merci, Speaker. President Zelensky. Thank you, President Zelensky. What an honor for me to take the floor in this extraordinary historique. and historical moment. Et pour tous mes, mes chers collègues and ici, for all of my dear colleagues. The Green Party is part of a grand green family in many countries of this world. A few days ago, I received the following letter sent by the President of Ukraine's Green Party, Vitaly Kononov, and I quote, Dear Green Friends, we are writing to you from bomb shelters from our home Ukraine, which is mercilessly attacked and bombarded by Russian forces since that fateful day, February 24, 2022. Ukrainians are indiscriminately hit. Collateral damage amounts to total destruction of cities, many civil and social infrastructures that have no relevance to the military are destroyed. Thousands of civilians dead and injured. Millions are fleeing their homes. Ukrainian army and civil defense volunteers have taken up arms and are fighting for the survival of Ukraine. They are successful to a great extent, but missile and bomb attacks by air are causing greatest damage. We are helpless. We have no weapons to counter air attacks. We appeal to you for support. Please urge your governments to help protect our sky by having a no-fly zone. For the sake of world peace and security, for democracy and resolution of conflicts, through peaceful means and a rules-based world order, please help Ukraine. You now, it broke my heart to write our dear colleague in Ukraine that all elected Greens around the world have come to the same conclusion, that a no-fly zone will risk a wider war and even a nuclear war. We know these reasons are solid, even though they ring hollow. But we must use every tool, and I fear that the tools we have in front of us are inadequate to the task. President Zelensky, we do not want to let you down. We fear that we may inevitably let you down, but we will find every tool we can find. And where there aren't adequate tools, by God, let's invent them. In 1956, in the Suez Crisis, In the crisis in Suez in 1956, not yet Prime Minister, but Lester B. Pearson, a Canadian. We are, we love ourselves here in Canada, we do, but we are an insignificant country in the massive geopolitics of superpowers, but we sometimes get good ideas. Lester B. Pearson invented UN peacekeepers. We need to invent something now that's effective to stop the war, to stop Putin, to save Ukraine. We have to use every single idea, every single sinew, every muscle. We must not relent for one single second. We have seen illegal wars. I've lived long enough to see many w illegal wars based on lies in Vietnam, in Afghanistan, in Iraq. Too many innocent lives lost, and now never again. Not one more Ukrainian child. Please, God, stop the bombs. Please, let's have a ceasefire. Please leave a pathway for Vladimir Putin to make it to a negotiating table and find a peace. How do we stop lies? We stop them with the truth. And the truth is the courage of the Ukrainian people. The truth is the courage and the unexpected reality of you, President Zelensky. An honest to God, 
Democrat, a human being, a mensch, a man of such moral courage that the world is inspired. But we must not let you down because God knows you won't let us down. We must do more. We know this. You are, as our Prime Minister just said, a champion of democracy. May we be worthy to stand by you. May we find the ways that make it meaningful that we stand with you. Not one more lost life, please, God. Not one more mother in Russia who weeps for a lost son in an immoral and illegal war. Thank the brave Russians who face jail just to go on the streets and say, stop the bombing, no more war. And I close, I close with this, President Zelensky, what I want when I pray, and I pray for you constantly, and for Ukraine. What I want is that you come here in person, that we invite you and we see you here, president of a country at peace, of a free, democratic, and victorious Ukraine. Please come here so that we can hope that in your eyes we remain worthy to be called your friend. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. May. Once again, I would like to thank His, Ex His Excellency President Zelensky for having addressed this I house. I know that we will remember this exceptional man for a very long time. I would also like to thank all parliamentarians and all our distinguished guests for having attended, either in person or by video link. This historic joint address to Parliament will continue to be that, a historic event. Merci. Thank you. Yakuku. Thank you.